Victims of the contaminated blood scandal have still not heard whether they will be getting the extra financial support despite a plea by the judge heading the public inquiry. The inquiry is now looking at how tens of thousands of NHS patients back in the 1970s and 1980s were infected with HIV and hepatitis C in what's been described as the worst ever NHS treatment failure. Steve Diamond, who died just before Christmas, was one of those affected. Uh, his widow has told the BBC that many widows like her are being left with nothing. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, has more details. My fear was that he would pass unnoticed and he deserved better than that. If it wasn't for the generosity of my friends, I would be homeless and without income. Yes, I was envisaging sort of sleeping, on, sleeping in the car parked on the beach. The last time I saw Steve and Sue was in September. He'd suffered for much of his life with a debilitating infection, hepatitis C. In December, he became one of the thousands who lost their lives because of the contaminated blood scandal. I remember him as the funny, clever, gentle, loving guy that I first met as a teenager. I remember his intellect. He was just the other half of me. Steve was a haemophiliac. His blood didn't clot properly. In the 1970s and 80s, like many others, the NHS gave him medication to help his condition, but it came from infected blood donors who hadn't been screened. The basic plan, you know, to have children, to have careers and whatever, yes, the hepatitis C did sort of damage that. So far, there's been no official compensation to victims. There is a complex structure of payments which varies around the UK. For widows like Sue in England, there's a one-off payment of £10,000 which hasn't yet come through. Beyond that, she'll have to rely on benefits. There are so many widows of long date, some have been widowed for nearly 30 years, who are still fighting to keep their homes around them, who can't afford to live decently, who are borrowing money from family members so they can eat at the end of the month. In October, the judge heading the public inquiry wrote to ministers saying, throughout the preliminary hearings, there were repeated calls for financial assistance, which fully recompenses individuals and families for the losses they've suffered. Decisive action on this matter should be taken and communicated to those affected at the earliest opportunity. The Department of Health said it was carefully considering what changes would be appropriate to address concerns raised. Sue will be there when the inquiry starts up again in April, but it'll be without Steve. I know that when, I, when I'm there on my own, there will be people around me, there'll be arms around the shoulder. What there won't be, of course, is Steve to share it with. He was wanting to be there, he was planning to be there, and he was wanting to participate. He was campaigning till the end. That was Sue Gorman there, speaking to our health editor, Hugh Pym.